Hey everybody, this is the first of our traveling train tutorials that we're going to be going over. And the first thing we're going to need is a path for our train to travel on. And this could either be a NURBS circle, which is going to be a closed path. And if I scale that up, we get a nice sized train track that way. Or you could grab one of the curve tools, and you could grab CV curve or something of that nature. Make sure it's set to smooth, just reset. And we could make a path that sort of travels around like that. All right, so either one will work. We'll go with the circle to begin with. I think that's gonna be just as easy. The next thing we're gonna need is once we have our path is to go into the animation menu. And we're gonna want the tool on top here, the joint tool. And what we're going to do with that, as you probably can imagine, is we're going to create um, our bones or IK for our train, okay? So each bone is going to equal a car on our train. So what I'm going to do is tap the joint tool, and I'm going to hold down X so it snaps to each joint. All right, we'll just make it this long is fine. All right, I think this one got away from me, so we'll just grab this guy right here, put him on move, and we'll just wiggle until he snaps right into place. Look at these guys, and make sure they snapped into place. Okay, so this is the root, and we talked about how you can tell the root of your joint because the large end of the um, bone is in the direction of the root, and this is the last joint on the train. All right. So we might as well make some cars while we're here, because that was part of what we did. Um, so let's just create a box real quick. All right, and that's too big. So what we'll do is I'll go into the channel box over here, and I'll just change the size of it. We could scale it by I if you wanted to. You could tap the R key and scale it down. Um, but this way we can set our scale over here, and I think that's going to work much better. I'm just going to set the height and the depth to 0.5. All right, so that looks pretty good. So the only thing left I want to do um, is I'm going to place this, if I go here, right over my bone. Let me get this, turn the snapping off, and grab the box, and we'll just move this up right there like that. Okay, so we'll just do something like that. Okay. And maybe we'll just make it red. Just right-click on it and say assign favorite material, maybe a Lambert. And over here, we'll click on the Lambert. And if you go to the color swatch, you can actually just grab one of these, or you can make your own. Move that around, make it yellow, make it orange. Let's say today we're going to have orange cars on our train. Okay. So there are five bones, two, three, four, five. So let's just make four more copies of this box. I'm going to hold down Control D. And that makes a copy. Let's move this one out to where I think I want it, something like that. And if I don't do anything else, and then I just hold down Shift and tap D, that'll give me those boxes. All right. So I need to stretch out my bones a little bit, but for now this will work fine. This will just do for our example right now. Maybe I should have made the boxes a little bit smaller, but it doesn't make any difference. Anyway, so I want to parent each box or each train car to a bone. So in this case, I'm just going to select the train car and then the bone and tap P to parent it. And again here, going to tap P to parent that one to that bone. Hold down Shift and tap P to parent that one. Select this one, select that. If you prefer, you can go to the Edit menu and say Parent, which is the same command. And over here, do this. And again, we can just tap P or Parent command. So each bone now has a box connected to it. Alrighty. And we're pretty much ready to go. All we need to do at this point now is go into the skeleton menu again. And what we're looking for is the IK spine handle tool. So I'm going to tick on that. One thing I want to check is I want to double click it over here in the tool panel so that I can, because if we reset this over here, you can see where this wants to create a curve. Well, we don't want it to do that because we have a curve. So I'm just going to turn that off. Okay. So over here, the rule is really simple. We want to pick the root. 
then pick the last bone on the chain, and then pick the path. And that's it. Now we're on the path. Currently we're not going anywhere. This command's a little bit different than when you go into the animate menu and you go to motion trails and attach the motion path, which will automatically send the chain on its way. Over here, it's going to be um, a manual setup that you do. And what's look, what we're looking for that's actually the animated portion of this is the IK handle. And I'll probably have to go in here to find it, unless it's turned off. Oh, here it is right there. There's the IK handle. And all we want to do is when we add a value to the offset, we can change the value by clicking on it and then middle clicking here. Um, that will send the train around. All right. So as we send the train around the track. All right. So you'll notice that the train value goes from zero to a maximum of eight. You can't get any higher than eight. The reason you can't get any higher than eight is based not on uh, anything to do with the train, but it does have something to do with the curve. The curve currently has eight spans or eight control points. Okay, so we can verify that if we go into the attribute editor over here, we can actually see it has eight spans. Okay, which for a circular track is fine, but if we wanted to do something more detailed, like expand this out and make hills or you know, uh, uh, you know, different sites shapes on it, um, eight's probably not going to be enough. But I want to just show you, just in case you wanted to add more control to your track, what you would need to do. All we need to do is go into the Surfaces menu over here, and in under Edit Curves, we have a command down here that is called Rebuild Curve. And with Rebuild Curve, what we can do is we can actually change settings, and I'll put it back to Reset for a second, just to reset it to default and I'll show you what we can do to reset this. Um, this is all fine up here, uniform, we certainly want it to be uniform. Um, we don't want it to be zero to one. That's, um, it's gonna be, it make more sense to us visually and just as we're thinking about what type of construction we want on this curve to say, we'd like the, uh, the range of our spans to be from zero to number of spans, okay? And that'll make sense in a second. The default is to, four, which is really only half of what we have, so that would certainly not be what we want. So in this case, we might take this up to, um, uh, we'll stick it up to 15, completely arbitrary. And we want it to be cubic, that's fine. The real big difference of the two that you use the most often are three cubic and one linear. If we tapped one linear, this becomes very, almost like a an octagon or a hexagon sort of shape with flat sides. Cubic just means it's rounded, okay? So this is all good, and if we hit the button and we apply, um, the train moves, which makes sense. Uh, but now our spans are now 15, which is what we set it for, okay? And as a matter of fact, what we can do is I can hit linear for a second and show you what that looks like. This is that kind of linear to linear to linear sort of a shape like a street sign sort of a thing. And we don't want that, we want cubic. That gives us a nice smooth build, okay? And you can see right there, it gives us 15 degrees with cubic. This could be 15, it could be 24, it could be 30. Uh, basically, the less that you can do, the better. Um, but if you need to add details, um, more gives you more options to pull things up like hills and such. So if you wanted to add a hill over here or you wanted to add a dip over here, um, potentially that's what you might do. So you might say something like this, and you have a little bit of a hill and a little bit of a dip. So um, now we still just need to animate this thing because it's not moving yet. The animation is not going to be on the curve or the boxes. The animation is on that little end controller or the end effector right there. So we'll go back to the channel box. And what we're looking for is offset. Now our offset's different. The offset that we need to make this thing go completely around the circle is going to be based on the spans. So in our case first, down here in the time slider, let's just take this up to 10 seconds, which is 240 frames. Okay? So at frame 1, 
I want an offset of zero, and it's upside down, we'll fix that afterwards. And I'm going to say key selected. And at 240, we can middle mouse click and send it around. And once again, exactly as expected, the offset now is 15 because that's the number of sp spans. Okay. And if we look at it, our train comes around, it rotates up, which is not per se what we wanted to do. Well, the up part certainly is, but over here where it goes upside down, we don't really want that. So we're going to fix that. Let's just take the train somewhere um, and go into its attribute editor. Okay. And we're going to go into the IK handle and let's take a look at is here advanced twist control. So what we want to do is just tick that on. By default, it's set to scene up positive Y. Well, in Maya's world, positive Y is up. So it's setting the up axis to positive Y, which is exactly what we want. And if you look at it, now the train is not flipping. And this gives you exactly what you were looking for. Now, if you did want to rotate it, let's say you were doing a spaceship, you do have the ability to roll the ship. So you could basically roll it if you wanted to, but this gives you the ability to um, do that if you want it. And if you don't want it, you don't have to do it. But if you were coming over a hill and you wanted it to tilt to one side or roll to one side, perhaps maybe you put a little bit of roll on it, a little bit of roll back, and it makes it look a little bit more exciting. But basically, that's it. And if we wanted to change something, make the hill a little bit higher, we could do that. You may find that because we're stretching out uh, the points and the distance between the points, that you may want to rebuild the curve uh, because it might slow, look like it's slowing down up here a little bit. At this point, it doesn't really matter. It seems to go faster in this section than it did over there. So my guess would be uh, we've stretched out the curves. We probably just want to rebuild the curve a little bit. And then that should set us up the way we want. But if we wanted to do something as far as um, changing the animation, we have the ability to do that. We can go into the curve editor. Remember, the, the animation is not on the boxes or the train cars. The animation is on this controller. And if we hit F down here, we can see this is a nice flat curve. By default, Maya probably has you set up with a bit of an ease on either of these. And that's going to blow the illusion of a smooth tripper around the train track. What it'll look like is that it's smoothing into the beginning and the end. And that's going to look more like this. So as we come around, it'll slow down and then come back and then look like it's starting up again. So you may not want that. Maybe you do. But if you wanted to just keep looping around, um, what you want here is a nice linear curve. So you can select the entire curve in those two points. And right here is linear. And that will give you the result of a nice even trip around the trains. And if you wanted it to go faster or slower in the middle, that's easy. We've done that before. All you need to do is pick the point that you want it to um, pause at. We can select the curve, right click, and insert a key. And let's say we wanted it to slow down for 20 frames here in the middle. We could say insert a key, grab this, and I'm going to hit the W key and hold down shift to move it. And then I can kind of move it just like this. And then just grab these two guys and sort of flatten them out. So I'll just move this up until it looks even. All right. So now as my train comes down the hill, it'll hit this point, stop nice and flat, and then pick up again and go. All righty. And again, as far as the boxes, you could either then just model these guys. These guys are completely movable, so you can play with those. You could, if you had your own train cars, just parent your train cars to these. So let's say you had modeled out a really fancy, I don't know, cylinder train, and you were like, well, this is going to be my train model. But if you've got everything set up, you don't need to completely change that. So in this case, I'll just move it. I'm going to snap it to a vertice, something like this. Let's say I want to move this, and this is my new fancy train. Um, we might want to do something like um, select the child, shift select the parent, tap P, and away they go. So now that moves with the train. But let's say we did that to all. 
I might have a default material on the boxes that once I had all of my trains set up, that at that point I just move the transparency and then they're all invisible and I'm left with just my train moving. They're still there. You can actually select them. I've just made their material transparent so I don't have to look at them. So this way you can set up your train before you even have your um, cars modeled and you can set up your track and then at a certain point you can just parent on your choo-choo trains, the modeled ones, and just like I said grab these and hide these and literally just take their transparency down and it looks like these are your actual trains. Alright, hopefully that was helpful and uh, if you have any other further questions just let me know.